You have a banging bot. I don't know why you feel inadequate. It appears that we have beef. And luckily, they call me the butcher. You will die. Oh, uh, welcome back to the Quarantine Games. We're here for another week of social distancing in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we may be socially distant, but through the magic of make believe, we're all closer than ever. How are you guys doing? Super. Wonderful. We were in a bit of a tight spot last we left off. We yes. were doing great. I don't know what you're talking about. We were crushing Stephanos it. was not doing okay. He was crying. <laughs> Last we met, in their ongoing search of the missing Floon Blagmar, our suddenly psychotic heroes descended upon a Xanathar guild hideout in the sewers of Waterdeep. After viciously taunting a goblin and pushing a man into a pit of toxic goo, they ran into an old foe from the yawning portal, the wretched bandit Krentz. Putting a high-stakes ruse into motion, they drained the life from Krentz's body, sawed his face off, and applied it to Steve's face as a mask as they headed into the final chamber. Will Steve's bard skills help our heroes save Floon and defeat the nefarious strangers that lurk within the lair? Let's find out now! Okay, so you guys had just uh, walked into the final chamber. Steve, you were wearing Krentz's face. I would like to cure somebody though. Um, I know Kez is a bit down on hit points. Can I use that cure wounds thing that I, you know, comes handy sometimes? Oh, these are different sessions. So sometimes we heal. I'm just cut us some slack. We're doing all right. You guys are doing great. All right, so Steve, we're your, we're your prisoners. And I'm taking you in as a, uh, what the hell is my name again? <laughs> your name is Krentz. 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 What are we gonna do with the old man though? Oh, Renair, he's not old. What made you think he's old? Let's exchange yeah, okay. them. Let's exchange Renair. Oh, that's right. That was our whole plan. I forgot. We were gonna, we were gonna see, do a prisoner exchange. Oh yeah, we were gonna do that. I forgot about that. Uh, I don't know. I feel kind of bad about that now. He's been really useful. That's true. true. Why don't? I mean, we also still have Olo's father's ashes, and we have Zoblob's stuffed animal. Those will be very useful in the battle to come. Good. I An hope old so. Old man dust and a, a plush toy. Maybe you could cute them to death and gross them out. <laughs> What we'll do is we'll pretend that all three of you are my prisoners mm -hmm. and put your hands behind your backs like you have uh, handcuffs on or something like that from this mm -hmm. realm. And then uh, slowly but surely position yourself within striking distance of all three of the aforementioned baddies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, here we go. I'm gonna <laughs> open the door. I say hello, gentlemen. Groomshaw, <laughs> look what I found <laughs> down in the sewage tunnels. These three miscreants trying to sneak into our palace. Why don't you roll for uh, deception? <laughs> it appears that I've rolled a 13 with the deception of plus five, which makes it 18. Uh, Groomshar looks over at you and furrows his brow. Uh, and he says, oh, why are you disturbing me? I told you not to come in here. Yes, but I thought that this might be of import because I found these three out here trying to break in to find the very fellow that your foot is upon. I'm in the middle of interrogating this idiot here. You're going to, you're going to anger the master. Well, I don't know where to put them. I was hoping that I could keep them in here. That way you could keep an eye on them. Suddenly the, uh, the, the mind flayer at the back of the room, the uh, very imposing nightmarish figure, uh, lets out a shriek and begins making his way uh, to a double doorway uh, on the west side of the room. Everyone's gonna need to roll for initiative. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, dear friends, I fear that we may be heading for a red wedding type of scenario. <laughs> I don't like him nearing the double doors. I have 11. Oh, shit, I rolled a three. Seven. Well, so much for carving that guy's face off for no reason. He kind of deserved it. The intellect devourers first. He jumps from the Mind Flayer's arms, then starts running toward uh, Keza. Of course, why? Well, boys, it appears that we have beef. And luckily, they call me the Butcher. At this point, I've given up on Steve. I, I, was, I would really like to get my greatsword out and just fucking nail this thing like a baseball across the room. It swipes its little brainy claws at Ew. you. Ew! Um, Disgusting. Ugh. I hate that so much. And it, it misses, but then it 
it starts to rear up on its hind legs and starts to vibrate a little bit. Do you mind doing um, uh, an intellect save? I rolled an eight, so I have a seven. It did fail to devour your intellect, so for now, Ooh. you're okay, but it, it looks hungry, I'll tell you that. Next up is, uh, uh, who's next? Renair. He's going to take a swing at the little brainy fella. Uh, and he <laughs> does not do a great job. Look, he's a little stunned. He's still a little shaken by the fact that he just saw you guys cut a man's face off. So, Pull it uh, together, pretty maybe boy. Maybe he's not on his A game. Next up is Keza. Yeah, all right. So can I, I just want to take a, a big old golf swing to this thing with my sword. All right, give it a go. 18. That's, uh, I'd say that's a hit. Let's go. A roll for damage. Seven. Uh, you connect quite well. Uh, there, there, there's a big sort of a wet thunk as you oh, hit it with your sword. Love that. It flies across the room and hits the wall. Excellent. Going, 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 gone. Thank it you. scrambles back to its feet, a bit worse for wear, but still very, very angry. Dang Next it. up is Groomshar, who uh, turns toward Renair. He fires a, a firebolt at him. Renair uh, successfully dodges and jumps out of the way. Excellent, Next good job, up buddy. Is uh, our good pal Stephanos. You all didn't know this, but back in my day, <laughs> in the far, far away land, uh -huh. when yeah. I was born, mm -hmm. a priest came over me. It gave me a power, a raging power of a sacred flame. So I'm gonna use my sacred flame cantrip. I don't even know who I'm aiming it at. I'm just gonna blast it. Who are you aiming at? Groomshar, Groomshar. All right, I'm gonna roll for this. 18, 18. That's a voluminous blast. Uh, unfortunately, Groomshar does jump out of the way. But that means he left off Floon, so you did some good. That's true. now Floon is free. Floon's looking great. He is, um, beaten to a bloody pulp and is not getting off the ground, but he's still alive, so okay. that's Okay, well, he's alive. Yeah. Do you remember if the uh, agreement was dead or alive? It was Did alive. Ever... It was oh, alive. Okay, just wondering. Yeah. Okay. I know. I that asked. would make things a lot easier if he was dead. All right. Sure would. Um, next up is Steve. I'm gonna use the, uh, the true strike cantrip again, and I'm gonna use it against the mind flayer. You gonna play some terrible flute again? I'm gonna take out a different thing. I'm gonna take out a horn this time because I've always wanted to be Dizzy Gillespie. I'm gonna play a funny little jazz riff uh -huh. and it's gonna confuse the Mind Flayer at the very least. I, this might be my last performance, so I might as well make it a pretty good one. Yeah, give it a go. I'm like that band on the Titanic. I was gonna say that, but then I didn't want to reference that because uh, what, what is, is that even? A it's been a Titanic. privilege playing with you tonight. <laughs> I rolled a 17 plus five, which is 22. Uh, well, on your next attack, you will have advantage. You play a beautiful song with your, what did you take out, a flute or something? I nope. took out a horn and I played it like Dizzy Gillespie. It was a nice little jazz trot. Nice little jazz yeah. interlude into this, <laughs> into this battle. Wait, can you, can, can you tell me what the, uh, what the Mind Flayer thought of it? Did he like have any notes or anything? Uh, his attention is now certainly on you, but he has spoken no words. So speechless, yeah, I thought so. Uh, now it's his turn. He has stomped in his tracks. He was heading toward the doorway, but now he turns and looks at you and his eyes become very Ooh. radiant. Um, why don't you do a wisdom saving throw and see what you get? That's a d20 plus whatever wisdom modifier you have. I rolled a 20 plus <laughs> one okay. is 21. So wise. Right. <laughs> well, um, nothing happens. So you're not entirely sure what he was attempting to do just then. I gotta say, Steve, well done. The intellect devourer now runs up toward Renair and uh, uh, slashes its claws at him Su successfully. It shreds his uh, the skin on his shins to oh, little no. strips. Oh, um, God. Jesus Christ. Oh, Renair. <laughs> <laughs> I think Renair's about to get murked. So Renair uh, screams at the sight of his uh, now mangled legs and is screaming and screaming. Uh, the the little intellect of our rears up on its hind legs and shrieks at him uh, and clearly was attempting to do 
some other horrible thing to him, but uh, failed miserably. Next up is Renair. <laughs> See, uh, maybe he'll take out some anger on this little guy. Um, no, that's a that's a critical miss on his part. So he may <laughs> still dead. I guess that good, makes good sense. Good work, Renair. <laughs> yeah, he's not doing too great. Uh, Why have we kept you along? I'm Kaza, so sorry. Your turn. Uh, okay, yeah. I just feel really bad, and I'm kind of still angry that that my. Uh, that my whale last time didn't didn't actually kill the brain thing. I just want to come and cleave the thing in two to finish it sure. off. Okay. So I rolled an eight. You raise your great sword and you bring it down with with uh, incredible might, and it hits the stone, and the little thing uh, snaps its little teeth at you and then runs across the room. <laughs> Disgusting! It's scurrying away like a little rat. Next up is our good friend Grimshar, who turns uh, toward Steve, and he uh, bears a little dagger, and <laughs> now he's just going, going dirty, bringing out the knives. Points his dagger, uh, Steve, and misses, but just barely, just barely. Nice try, Grimshaw. Uh, next up is Stephanos. All righty, uh, looks like my little Spells aren't working very well, so I guess I'll just go back to my trusty crossbow here. I pointed back at that little uh, half orc that reminds me of the murderer of my family. Groomshar, oh, good old Groomshar. And I have an eight plus a four, it's 12. 12. Uh, you, you do hit, you do hit him. Ooh. Good for you, Stephanos. <laughs> you finally did it. Roll for damage. I rolled a five, so five. Okay, you hit him kind of like right in the neck, kind of near the shoulder. A lot of blood is spurting, but he's still he's still up and at him. Still a good shot. Hopefully someone can finish him off after this. Next up is Steve. I will take my rapier out, and I'm gonna go straight for the mind flayer, and I'm gonna stick it right up his nostril. Yeah, get him. Uh, give it a go, roll two d20s, because you did uh, you do have the advantage on this one. The first one is a one. Okay. Excellent, <laughs> Excellent. okay, so What's anything better. Anything else. The second one's a little bit better, but it's still not great, it's 11. Oh, no, 11's way better, 11's much 11 better. 11 plus four is 15, so. 15, you do connect. Um, why don't you roll for damage? Six, yeah! Yeah, all that muscle. And then plus a two is, is eight. Uh, you definitely do some damage, but it doesn't even flinch. Uh, and now it That's looks alarming. angry. It looks very angry. Uh, and it turns towards you and again starts sort of, its eyes start to glow. I need you to do a wisdom save. Please uh, roll for wisdom. Oh yeah, I got a 19. <laughs> a 19. Suck it, mind player. <laughs> you are crushing these saves. This is All amazing. Right, uh, <laughs> yeah, plus one is 20. That's a 20. Great job. <laughs> yeah. Great job. The Mind Flayer again looks a little disappointed in itself. That's what happens when you come at Steve. Next up is the um, Intellect Devourer. So it uh, slashes at Stephanos uh, and connects uh, oof, no. with its little claws. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Stephanos. Oh, no. But I'm so tiny. How could he even see me? You're getting beat up by a meatball. What's your HP? My HP is 10. Please don't tell me that I'm dead. Well, you're not dead. Um, <laughs> but? It, it did inflict 10 points of damage. So oh you, my God. Um, <laughs> you are unconscious and lying on the ground. Oh no. I actually feel a little sad right now. You're okay for now, but on your next turn, you're gonna have to do a saving throw to see if you continue to stay alive. Next up is our good friend, Renair. He doesn't look happy, cause you know, he enjoys Stephanos' company. So he takes out his little rapier, but he swings it blindly at the <laughs> intellect devourer and just whiffs horribly. Uh, Renair. Oh <laughs> next, man, please. buddy. Oh, Next buddy. up is, is uh, Keza. I'm facing off with this stupid brain. Uh, sure. Meatball brain. Uh, one last time, I need to chop this thing in two. And I rolled an 11 with my great sword plus four, so 15. That's a hit, that's a Excellent. hit. Excellent, okay. And then damage. Six plus two is eight. I have eight. Uh, you definitely do a lot of damage. It is looking, the brain is starting to be quite covered in blood right now. Still Are you alive. kidding me? Still quite uh, angry. This stupid fucking brain. Next up is Groomshar. 
um, who turns toward our good friend Keza. Don't you even start with me. He tosses a firebolt your way. Just uh, just roll a d20 for a save on that. And I rolled a five. Okay. Um, he does hit you with his firebolt. Uh, only one point of damage. So okay, I'm fine then. He does connect directly, but it's just a little bit of a little, a little spark. Ass yeah. wipe. Next up is Stephanos, but uh, you know, he's not conscious. So uh, Stephanos, what? <laughs> Why don't you do a saving throw? Roll a d20 and see, see what happens. Uh, Stephanos, mm. yeah. Oh, he's really milky. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, poor guy. Okay. You know, I felt bad. Please don't make me change that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your, your poor little body. Okay. I'm gonna roll a d20. Roll a d20. Oh, that's what that was, I guess. <sighs> but before I do. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, well, please yeah. tell us. But before I do, I just sure. wanna say. That you love we everyone? Were the Best of friends. Best friends. Oh yeah. yeah, there it is. We were the best you love of friends. Them. Oh, yeah. we love you too, buddy. And I remember the oh, yawning okay. portal like yeah, it was yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Who could forget? Why don't you give a roll? <laughs> oh no! I rolled a nine. That is not a successful saving throw, so that is one fail. If there's oh, two more no. of those, you will die. Um, <laughs> next up is no. uh, Steve. <laughs> Right. Oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack this little brain here with my rapier, shish kebab it, and turn it into a little roasted marshmallow. Love it. Here we go. Um, I rolled the, I rolled the two. I rolled the two. <laughs> okay. Well, you do not successfully do that. You accidentally stab Floon. Uh, <laughs> Floon goes. Ah. <laughs> Um, well, at least so, he's still alive. That's uh, all I was checking well, for. I was yeah, checking just for a checking pulse. to make sure he still was kicking. So that's good. Nihalor is is just at the door now and about to leave, but he still is fixed on Steve and is still quite angry. And his eyes again begin to glow. Steve, uh, please roll a saving throw, uh, wisdom. Unbelievable! This thing is obsessed with me. Uh, I rolled a thirteen plus a one is a fourteen. Nihalor uh, kind of shrugs <laughs> and then. <laughs> Uh, makes his way through the door and oh, is now man. out of the room. Next what the up, hell did that thing want to do with me? What the? I don't know, man. Next up is the intellect devourer uh, oh, who slashes okay. at Keza. I am going to crush it with my hands next. He, oh, please. That thing does not like you. It's quite a quite a slash, and oh, it connects. It, it takes eight points from you. Wow, Jesus. Jesus Christ, that's a strong little brain. This thing, though it's on its last legs, is getting more and more vicious, and uh, it slashes directly at your, your stomach, and qu Ooh. quite a nasty gash. Next up is Renair. Damn. He says, nobody does that to my friend. Oh, uh, thanks, buddy. I'm sure you're going to show him what's due. <laughs> what's her name? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. He thanks, takes buddy. out his rapier and he looks a little lightheaded and he slashes at uh, the intellect devourer and he slices it in half. Well, I'm glad somebody got to. You you know, you put in all the wax on the tree before that. Thank you, Steve. Next up is uh, Keza. All right, well, I still got a lot of rage um, and I really want to crush something with my hands. So can I just pounce on the orc and just like crush his head? Just, uh, yeah, see how that goes. I did, I rolled an 18. Okay. Let's go, it's skull crushing time. You jump on him and you squeeze his head and you definitely hear a crack. And he Jesus knocks you Christ. off of him. Uh, his face looks a little different. Uh, uh, he's not well, certainly, <laughs> um, but he's still still there. Uh, next up is uh, our good pal Grim Grimshar, uh, who was, Fresh off CTE, right? Yeah, he's not doing too well. Uh, but he turns back towards you and just slashes at you. He does not hit you and yeah. stumbles back a little Good. bit. Good. Next up is Stephanos. Roll to see if <laughs> you remain alive. Oh. 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 oh my God. My heart. Steve. Shouldn't he be uh, unconscious? I have one uh, thing that. <laughs> To tell you, Steve. Yeah, 
Okay. <laughs> what do you want? Listen to him. Sorry for all the mean things I said. Oh. You're my best friend. I... Sweet of him. What? Your best? Whoa. Okay. Fine. Thanks. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. You know, Stephanos, I accept your apology. I know I'm hard on you. And I'm not sorry for all the mean things I've said, but that's just how I roll. That's just our friendship. Oh, and uh, I'm oh. glad that you could accept that in the end. Hopefully it's not the end. Oh, I rolled an 11. Hey! That's one in the in the positive category. So you're still hanging in there, buddy. Next up is Renair, who uh, swings back at Groomshar, and he misses. Now it's Keza again. All right. Great, I just want to uh, take out my sword and just lop the head off this guy. You sure you don't want to cut him in half? That seems to be your thing. Nah, I want his head. Okay. I rolled an 11, plus my great sword, four. You do connect. Okay. No damage. So 13. You swing your great sword with such speed and such agility that it almost appears that his head just disappears. Everybody is so confused by what has happened because where his head was, now there is just a red mist. And it seems oh, as if Jesus it's gone Christ, you until, pulverized him. until everybody hears a thunk and they look up and see that his head has actually hit the ceiling. <laughs> uh, it popped off of him and then it falls back onto the ground with a sickening thud. Uh, the dust has cleared. The room is yours. That's very great. I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, Stephanos is still almost dead, though, right? How do we? F yeah, you should probably give him a give him a little help over there. Will we give him like a Gatorade or something? The the battle has ended, so we we can restore him to one. Whoa, Stephanos, you're okay. Whew. You know what I learned from that? Just now, <laughs> immediately, that battle. you immediately have a lesson. <laughs> Yeah, what did you learn from being unconscious? <laughs> I learned that you must never hold back from what you must say to everybody. Don't hold back. Keza, I've had a massive crush on you from the very beginning, Aww. but I haven't been able to say it because I feel so inadequate with my tiny yet banging bod. But you, you have a banging bod. I don't know why you feel inadequate. I'm very conflicted because you remind me of the person who killed my family or the hack wolf that killed my family. So now I'm just confused. I don't think we physically would make sense, but I appreciate the sentiment. Is that the first time someone's ever climbed up your body and onto your shoulders and professed their love to you? Oddly enough, no. The, the room is, is yours again. It is cleared. Um... Uh, should we do a perception check of the room? Because this is the room you're stationed in, and maybe sure. there might be something useful here. Yeah, perceive away. Oh, hell yeah. Well, then 18. Could have used that in the battle. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Now, uh, <laughs> that plus three is 21. Wow, you perceive the hell out of this place. Uh, you can see that there are two sleeping quarters off to the right behind some curtains. Um, and again, through the double doors, they're, they're closed ever since the Mind Flayer went through them, but you don't hear any activity beyond them. It seems if he did go through there, he is no longer there. Uh, can I first? All right, now that we've done that. Floon, are you okay? Do you know who you are? Floon is barely conscious. Renair can vouch for him. Renair says, that's Floon, all right. I'm glad to see he's still alive. Okay. I'm gonna use my cure wounds on Floon. Oh, that's Seems nice. like he needs a little bit, so. bibbidi battle boom. -bo. Floon uh, appears to be a little more vital now, a little, the vitality flows through him. He sits up, oh, thank you, thank you. He, he says, who can I hug? Anyone, let me hug you. He hugs all of you. Aww, uh, hey he's buddy. very thankful. Uh, this is great. That Groomshar, that rotten, rotten Groomshar. He was so, uh, he was so embarrassed that he grabbed the wrong person that he took it out on me and beat the living pulp out of me in front of that nasty mind flayer. Oh, well, don't worry. I turned his head into red dust. That's pretty messed up. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so it sounds like, Renair, you are in a bit of danger here. Yes, it seems like they were after me, for sure. Yep, uh, you know, not happy about that. Uh, what did, did the Mind Flayer say anything? Did they say anything about their plan when they were beating you up, Floon? No, I just, I saw he was carrying some sort of stone orb, and I don't know what he intended to use it for, but he ran, he kept going in and out of those double doors over there. A hmm. stone orb. 
Do you know what they wanted Renair for? What they wanted him for? Uh, something to do with his father. Seems like everybody wants you for that. The famous man. Flume, we actually need to bring you back to our friend Volo. I'm sure you're very familiar with him. Mm -hmm. Volo? Volo? Yes. Oh, your yes. friend Volo. He sent, he sent us here to, to get you. Very sweet of him. He's a good guy. Well, we have his father's ashes. <laughs> well, we're, we hope he's a good guy because he owes us some money if we return you to him, so. Uh, not much, I hope. <laughs> it's quite a bit. Yeah, he owes us quite a bit of money. Oh, well, I'm sure he'll scrounge it up somewhere. Yeah, he said he was going to be publishing another book, so we, we are hopeful that it is successful. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be another New York Times bestseller. Curious. Hmm. Well, wait, why do you say curious? I mean, it takes a while to publish a book. <laughs> Last I saw, he was still working on that manuscript, but... That's exactly what I was saying before. <laughs> Are you serious? You don't publish those things overnight, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Even well... Even this man who clearly has CTE <laughs> understands that. Well, glad we took his father's ashes then. <laughs> Where could I cash those? Yeah, can you get me out of here? I don't like it here. Uh, yeah, I guess let's go through the double doors. Those seem to be a quick exit. Okay, you walk through the double doors. In the middle of this otherwise empty room is a stone pillar carved with a small symbol, a perfect circle with 10 equidistant spokes radiating outward from its circumference. In the middle of this circle is a smaller circular indentation that bears a passing resemblance to a lidless eye. Mysterious. Maybe we should just go back out the way we came. Nah, I feel good about this. All right. Is it like a button? Can I press it? Uh, it's just an indentation. Uh, uh, Flume looks at it and says, that, that indentation, it looks similar to the stone that the Mind Flayer was carrying. Yeah, I thought that too, but I didn't really want to bring it up because I kind of want to leave. It's probably an exit. Uh, all right, let's do it, I Excellent. suppose. Excellent. Uh, someone roll for perception? Well, it appears that I rolled a 20. <laughs> Once again, I am able to perceive the hell out of a room, but when it comes to stabbing a mind flayer, I'm not really there. Yeah, you look around, you see another couple more like they appear to be sort of bunks. Um, this is basically a dead end. You do recall a curious wall panel back in the other room. It occurs to you just now with your keen perception that uh, <laughs> one of the corners seemed kind of funny to you. So you may want to head back through the double doors and go Look, I asked if it was a button. I thought about that. I just hmm. missed the weird Could be a stone. booby trap. All right. Could be a booby trap. Let's go back oh, there and press that weird button. Bad. Yes. You head back into the room where you laid waste to everybody, uh, and over in the corner you do see there is a bit of a trick wall there. It looks like a, a door masked to look like the rest of the wall. All right, let's go through this door. All right, so you uh, open the, the door and walk through a, din a very dingy corridor, um, and you, you push a section of a wall out, uh, and the other side actually seemed to be pretty well sealed, but uh, it seems to be like sort of an escape route. I don't know if the people on the other side of this were aware that this even existed, but you appear to be in a cellar somewhere. There's a bunch of uh, barrels around, and not much else to see except for a stairwell uh, leading up. See, I told you, this is the best way. We trudged through poop, saw a brain cut in half, and a half-orc's head hit the ceiling. I gotta say, I love you all. I don't know if you need to do a summary after every moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're going up the stairs? Yep, we're going up the stairs. Uh, you walk up the stairs and you appear to be in a a cozy little home. Uh, and there are some halfling children running around. They scream at the sight of you. Um, they scream, uh, Mother, father, there are strangers in our basement. A man and a woman run over to you uh, and are very scared. They say, we don't, we don't want any trouble. Please leave us alone. Uh, Stephanos, talk to them. Uh, yes, it seems like I've come to my own kind. Unfortunately, I don't know how to communicate with my kind because I kind of grew up an orphan for so long. So uh, honestly, this is actually making me feel a bit teary-eyed. I, I, don't, I don't like this. Can somebody else talk to them? Who had five seconds before he mentioned he was an orphan in the, uh, in the office pool here? No? <laughs> no, no one he else? lost. Uh, we, we're, just, we're just leaving. That's all. There was, there's, a, there's a secret entrance in your basement. We're, we're here by mistake. Uh, we'll just leave. Oh. We'll just leave oh. now. We're so sorry, but there is a hole in your basement. You'll you'll want to seal that up. Oh, we will. We will. I did not know that was there. 
You don't happen to have any healing spells, do you? No, we are not magic folk, but we okay. uh, we do have some salves. Would you mind? You can see we're pretty worse for wear. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, Thank just you. Just a moment. Uh, Merwick, the father, he he grabs some leaves from a bowl and starts munching on them and then spitting them out into his hands. Excellent. Um, uh, who who needs it? Give it to Stephanos. He's, he's All right. in a bad If you don't mind, I'm gonna eat this. Okay, this Oh, it this, tastes this. like my father's porridge. No, 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 it he... Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> well, you know, he was not supposed to eat that. He was... <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that, that was a salve for the wounds, but maybe it will... <laughs> uh, you know. That's really all we have right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> that was Good it. Good job, genius. You just ate a bottle of triple antibiotic. <laughs> Maybe it'll help. Uh, <laughs> do you need anything else, or can we enjoy our breakfast? <laughs> oh, we'll leave. We'll leave. As you walk outside, the bright morning sun hits your face, the smell of fresh air. You hear seagulls in the distance. You're uh. back on the dock ward in Fish Gut Alley. You've Beautiful. made it Excellent. back to the world of uh, the living. And now I think your only choice is to head back. We got to go back to the portal and meet yeah. your old pal Volo, which we will do next week when you return to him with the saved Floon Blogmar. Yeah. I really can't wait. I can't believe you guys did it. Hey. I really can't believe it. I mean, we're all Ooh. wounded and we did have to cut someone's face off but we got there. For no real reason. For no reason at all. It uh, was Stephanos' well, idea. He got it, bloodthirsty. It was, it was Stephanos' idea. <laughs> he immediately backtracked on it. Um, do you guys think Volo's gonna pay you next week? I mean, we have his father's ashes, so I'm glad we yeah. have two of those. Yeah. Or we could just shake it out of him. I at least have two reasons why he'll do it, and they're right here. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to roll a bit better during battle for that to be threatening. All right, well, uh, tune in next week to see what happens in the thrilling conclusion when we join up with our old pal Volo, a celebrity. We'll see you then. 